Uh, currently, I have an application with the Body Corporate Committee to install hard flooring in place of carpet. The bylaws state that hard flooring must be at least 62 decibels and include soundproofing underlay with a five millimetre thickness to be installed under any hard flooring. I've submitted the application for flooring with an acoustic report for the manufacturer of 52 decibels and five millimetres acoustic rubber underlay to be installed. So my application has clearly met the requirements of the bylaws. However, the committee seems to be delaying the decision to provide consent. We are nearly six weeks and the committee has since approved my other requests, um, which were on the same email request. The decision is holding up other works. I've made several inquiries to the body corporate manager as to what the delay is and have only been provided with generic responses in the likes of, we've forwarded this onto your committee. I just wanted to know what avenues or rights I have if I've not been provided a response in an appropriate time frame. Okay, so, I mean, I'll answer the, the, last, the last question here is what, what's the avenues or rights of the applicant? Um, as an individual lot owner, you are entitled to make uh, an application to the committee. You're, you're entitled to submit up to six motions per year to the committee. And the committee has to consider those within six weeks or provide you with a reason why not they request an extension of some kind. So I think you should activate that part of the legislation, make a formal application, a proper motion, and then force the committee into uh, having uh, some kind of committee meeting or a BOC so that you can get a formal decision one way, one way or another. That, that's, that's an avenue that's open to all lot owners. Um, six weeks is quite a long time. It doesn't always fit with people's building schedule plans, but that's what it is. So, that, so you know, um, you have to live with that. So yeah. from the committee's perspective, these kind of applications, I, I, I know that people agonize over them um, because they're, it's not so much it's not so much the application, but they're, they're worried about the impact of, on, on the person below. And if, and if adding this type of flooring is going to have an impact on that individual. And people, there's a lot of uncertainty about that. You know, there's, if, you, if, you, if you search up the issue on the internet, you could hear uh, nightmare stories about it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that are seriously affected. Uh, and, you know, committees are individuals who generally have the best interests of the owners at heart. So sometimes when they are taking a long time to decide, it's because they, they're trying to do the right thing, but they might not have a definite path, pathway towards doing that. They might, they might have had problems in the building in the past where, where people have said, my application's fine, and then it's, it's, it's turned out that there have been problems after the fact. So I think we have to be kind of sympathetic to that kind of issue. Um, but in this case, you know, the lot owner has made an application and the committee should consider it and have a vote on it. And if they choose to vote no, then the lot owner has their rights to go through the application process and, and everything like that. Um, and if they vote yes, then the lot owner can proceed. Um, so this, what I might touch on with this issue is that there is some, there is a school of thought that uh, these kind of flooring renovations don't need to have approval um, because it's, it, it's whether, it's whether or whether or not they, they are considered the common property, or whether they touch the common property or not. Uh, and really, I've, I've had some arguments that say, well, if you've got the noise bylaw in place, which I think pretty much every building does, that bylaw is sufficient in and of itself as a regulation because the lot owners are not allowed to have a high level of noise transference from one lot to the other. That's a school of thought. I don't know if it really applies. I think it's worthwhile people making the application and trying to show that they're doing it. As, as much as they can do with due consideration of their neighbours. Okay, and just going back to submitting the motion, that's something that's just come in with the new regulations a um, little bit earlier this year, isn't it, that you can submit up to six um, requests or motions in a year? Uh, yeah, okay. And so if uh, maybe if you could talk about that just a little bit, and also if at the end of the six-week period, if you haven't received a response, like what do you do at that point? Yeah, so I mean, in, in the past, you could submit ideas and questions and things like this, and they could go into the void and never never be responded to. And obviously, that was a fairly unsatisfying situation. So legislation changed in March, which now permits owners to submit up to six motions per year to the committee's consideration. The committee's got uh, six weeks to make a determination, or they can ask for an extension beyond beyond that six weeks. Uh, if, if it gets to the point where you've made a submission and after six weeks you haven't had anything back, it's considered that the motion is defeated and then you can proceed on that basis. So if you are unhappy with the outcome, 
uh, which you probably would be as an applicant, then you could go to the commissioner's office and, you know, and follow through on that basis. Um, I think this is a very good piece of legislation and we've been encouraging owners to use it more and more where possible because it's it, it, it creates a situation where a decision has to be made. So if you just, what, what, what might have happened in the past is people ask questions, can I do this, maybe is this okay, that okay? And it's got a little, it gets a little bit vague and then answers come back which are a little bit vague and then it goes on for three or four weeks and then a month and then two months and three months. And before you know it, a year's gone by and no, no, nothing's really happened and everyone's kind of frustration and being stuck. Having a, motive, having a motion, having a meeting, a decision has to be, has to be recorded one way or the other, for better or worse. Uh, and then that gives people a very definite and clear avenue for how to proceed in the event that they're unhappy with the final decision. Um, I think that's a good thing for the industry and I would encourage all owners who, who want an issue discussed to, to, take, to take that pathway because you will, you will get a definite answer. You might not get the answer you want, but you will, <laughs> you will get a definite answer. So.